NBC Sports presents live in its 30th anniversary season, the Professional Bowlers Tour. Today from North Brunswick, New Jersey, it's the Johnny Petraglia PBA Open. Making his fourth appearance this year is Dave Ferraro. His opponent will be George Branham III of Indianapolis. That winner will face 14-time titleist Steve Cook. In our semifinal game, we'll see Billy Young of Edmond, Oklahoma. And our tournament leader is Joe Salvemini. That's our outstanding field of finals for this afternoon's Professional Bowlers Tour telecast. The Professional Bowlers have returned to the greater New York area. In fact, they've come to North Brunswick, New Jersey for the $150,000 Johnny Petraglia Open. We've come today to one of my favorite spots anywhere in the U.S. of A. Princeton, New Jersey, home of Princeton University. Hello again, I'm Chris Schenkel. Behind me, the oldest and most historically significant building on this campus, Nassau Hall. This is where it all began. The building was completed in 1756. It has served as a barracks, as a hospital for both the Continental and British troops during the Revolutionary War. Princeton has turned out statesmen, writers, scientists, you name them. For instance, in the class of 1771, James Madison graduated, became the first graduate student, became our fourth president, and also is the father of our Constitution. Woodrow Wilson was president of this university, and he brought it from a small college into an internationally famous research center. Albert Einstein lived here. T.S. Eliot passed through. So did Scott Fitzgerald. The list goes on and on. So does our bowling tour. Let's now move to Caroler Lanes and hear from my colleague, Nelson Burton Jr. Bo. Thank you, Chris Schenkel. And about 20 miles north of the Princeton campus is Caroler Lanes, home of the second annual Johnny Petragley Open. This is one of the largest bowling centers in the United States with 82 lanes. The sellout crowd is anxious for the action. And this bowling center has a reputation of many high scores. We had seven 300 games here this week, 222 average to make the top 24. That's the highest of the 1992 PBA season. And the mystique of the high scores goes way back at Carroll Air Lanes. In 1963, Ray Blue set a PBA record with a 254 average for six games, yet he only finished second in the tournament to the great Dick Weber. So we expect more high scores today in the finals action. Now let's look at how the players are attacking the championship here. The oil is placed 45 feet down the lane this week. That's the longest oil we've had all year long. A little heavier concentration between the second and third arrows on the right-hand side. The last 15 feet are relatively dry. Now the players are playing a number of different angles this week. The two outside players on the right are right down the edge, next, outside the first arrow into the 1-3 pocket. Our powerful left-hander Steve Cooks near the center out to the edge. Our tournament leader, Joe Salvemini, is coming down the left edge. And George Branham III is playing down the center of the lane. Very diversified angles, Chris, and a lot of money at stake. That's right. In the Johnny Petragli Open, $150,000 broken down in this manner. 28 to the champion, 14, 5, 85, 65, and 5. And before one of the largest crowds I've seen in 30 years of doing this show here in New Jersey at Caroler Lanes. Dave Ferraro shakes the hand of George Brenham III. It'll be Ferraro, who was the fifth seed, his fourth television appearance this year, finished fifth in all three telecasts. That's where he's starting today, starting on the left lane. The same thing that's plagued him, Bo, in the other three appearances, that single pin, a seven. All right, Chris, he's hit around the pocket, and one thing has happened to David in his other appearances where he has been defeated. He's off to a slow start, and I think he's conscious that he's going to put a little more pressure on his opponent, hopefully in the first couple of frames. So Dave Ferraro of Kingston, New York, starts with a spare, and we got to know 29-year-old George Branham III from Indianapolis. Started down in the Detroit area, a good high school basketball player. Bowled out of California, now he's bowling out of the capital city of Indiana. Beautiful, beautiful shot.
powerful style of George Branham, kind of a creeping motion. Now, I'll tell you what, watch the position of his right foot right here as he pivots through. Everything else is in good shape. Now, he'll drive through with that right foot, staying low, that wrist underneath the ball, and look at that finish. That is just perfect. He's off to a good start with the strike. Hoping to double. And that puts George on top against Dave Ferraro. George won his first title, 1986, in the Brunswick Memorial World Open. With a spare working now, Dave Ferraro with six titles in his 13-year PBA career. close up of that pocket hit. Happens quickly, doesn't it? Good shot. You're right, Chris. Five-step delivery for Ferraro. Once again, he's in almost the same position as his opponent, George Brandon. But look at here. He's not quite pivoted onto the end foot, end of his right foot. And there's where he gets the key as he drives through, a little more upright style. And see the hand going directly to the target. Neither one of these players are turning their hands over the top of the ball as Dave Ferraro waits for a re-rack on the left-hand lane. He's allowed to. He's looking for a little different setup in the third frame. And if he can strike on the left lane marked with a spare there when we started this game. He'll even the game. Okay, we're all even. So he has tamed the left lane. Good point, Chris. And George Branham, I watched him all day on Friday, and he had a little bit of trouble with the right-hand lane. There was anything that slowed George down. He was hitting around the pocket on the right-hand lane, which doesn't hook quite as much as the left. This is his key. And George goes back on top now with three in a row. George Brenham III is an eight-year tour veteran. But you know George still has some goals. Well, my goals this year, Bo, is to, of course, win again and get back into Firestone. And I want to be more of a threat out on tour. I mean, last four years I haven't been doing that well. And I think now my game is coming to a head that I, I can be a threat out here. Now to go up by 20. It's a four-bagger. We mentioned Princeton. We're right near Rutgers, where the first intercollegiate football game was played in 1869. And Bud Wilkinson and I and ABC did the 100th anniversary game in 1969. Rutgers University, the entrance to another wonderful New Jersey institution. We'll be back. In this house of 82 lanes, they have really put the people in here today, a huge crowd, standing room only, Caroler Lanes in North Brunswick, New Jersey. Trailing by 20 can cut the lead to 10, Ferraro. Does just that. Dave Ferrero clarifies the turning point, which pushed him into today's finals. Well, all week I was uh, up in the top five until last night. I had a real bad start. I shot 160 my third game and uh, dropped 100 pins out of the show. Uh, I was kind of fooling around with different bowling balls, and I finally got the right one, and uh, I won my last four games, and that was the key to getting here today. Now to tie the game. All but the 10 on the left lane, Nelson. Chris, and he failed to mention that little interview. The one bad game he had, which almost knocked him out, was the 41st game, and he left seven 10 pins in that game. That's the only thing that's plagued him all week long. Okay. Meanwhile, George Brenham is quickly up. Four frames, four strikes, leading by 11. Sweet shot from George here after four strikes in a row. And a key for George is to come right up the back of the bowling ball. He does it here. He gets the solid 10. All right, carefully, as we look at his wife, Jackie, in from Indianapolis to watch her husband bowl today. 
And when I say about George Branham coming up the back of the bowling ball, George has a very powerful wrist action, and he wants to keep his fingers underneath the ball and let them come through the center of the ball. If his hand goes around the side and over the top, he gets a spinning action using the full grip. Now see how he keeps his hand underneath the ball? That's where he wants to snap the wrist from. After a four-bagger, marking them with a spare, covering the 10 pin, it's another strike for Branham. This is our first match. Ferraro, a very similar grip, a little shorter span, and the key Ferraro is also the same. He uses a little looser grip, but stay behind the ball and underneath. All right, very important, pivotal strike right there. Because if he can double, it'll even the match again when it looked like Branham might really pull away, Nelson. You're right, Chris, and this is the scoring we expected. Right now, if you take them off the sheet, as they sort of say in the professional bowlers tour, it'd be Ferraro 269 and Branham 279. You see how Ferraro is playing the lane. Start in the center, he's got a pretty straight approach, and he's going to be right around this first arrow. So you can see this right along the edge, almost the perfect angle. And at the last moment, the 10 pin here in this first game, it is all even. In the Johnny Petragli Open, North Brunswick, New Jersey. We'll be back. Don't go away. Count them three events. World Challenge of Champions. I did a rod trail sled dog race in the Florida Derby. Bramman. Another 10 pin on the right lane. In this even match. George shows very little emotion. A very cool customer at 5'10", 170 pounds. Last win was the 1987 AC Delco Classic. His first win was the Brunswick World Open. And he continues to mark as we go to Bo and a big guy, Bo. Thank you, Chris. The big guy, Steve Cook. Steve, the right-hander is just bombing him out there right now. We figured that would happen. Does it make any difference to you as a left-hander whether you bowl a righty or a lefty? No, it doesn't really make any difference to me. I'm just going to go out and bowl myself. You know, if I go out there and throw 12 good shots, I'm going to win or lose. And if I throw 12 good shots, then I'm going to be happy, and we'll just see what happens from there. That's the attitude of a winner, Chris. Back to you for more action. On the left lane, Branham. Another strike coming late in our game in this tight one. Still all even. Joe Salvemini, the tournament leader, continues to practice off to the right. That's the pinfall you're hearing. To take the lead. Wow, oh, what a battle, Bo. You know, next Saturday, the Pro Bowlers Tour rolls into the home of rock and roll. It's the Cleveland Open. Live, 3 Eastern, 2 Central, and 3 Pacific on ABC Sports. That's the Cleveland Open. Norm Duke, the defending champion. Now, Ferraro, who hasn't won a game in the championship round this year, has a chance to take a 20-pin lead, ninth frame. Ferraro in his 35th television appearance, his fourth this year, and he stated earlier that he's tired of being fifth. Maybe he can do something about it. He's bowling as best anybody could, but here's Branham, who started out hot. Can he finish hot? Here's the angle that George Branham's playing. You're going to see the ball travel right between the second and third arrows out to about the seventh board. Not quite as wide as you see Ferraro play it. The perfect shot, and he set himself up where he has a chance for a 259. More importantly, he can even the match with a strike on the first ball in the tenth frame. of a fantastic ending 
You're right, Chris. And George Branham looking to the right of the scoreboard, as you see Ferraro looking off to the left. Branham needed two strikes to make the top five last night. He answered that call with two powerful strikes, finishing the game, making the top five. Once again, the pressure's on him. It's anybody's match. Leaving the disappointing two pin. Two pin disappointing for his wife Jackie and for George here in our first game. The winner will meet a Firestone champion, a U.S. Open champion named Steve Cook. Any chance of a tie, Nelson? Very possible, Chris. 248 for George Branham. Dave Ferraro must strike on this ball to win the match outright. If he doesn't strike, if he gets nine spare strike, we have a tie, the first one all year. Huge loft out into the lane. Terrific sportsmanship, these professionals, your fellow professionals, though. Right, Chris, and what Ferraro is doing is looking for the scoreboard, and George Branham's almost conceding it, but we don't concede in Pro Bowling. Uh, as Del Ballard, our statistician, will verify, he has to keep it on the lane. That's a winner right there, Chris. That's right. All right. Ferraro will meet Cook. ABC Sports presentation of the Professional Bowlers Tour will return after this message and a word from our ABC station. Here at Carroller Lanes in North Brunswick, New Jersey, Dave Ferraro has won the first match, 255 to 248, each professional with eight strikes, our biggest match thus far in our 10 tournaments here on ABC Sports. You know, over the years, we've had the opportunity to see a few players make a lot of money. The long journey was started by that left-hander from the West Coast. His name was Earl Anthony, the first millionaire. Toledo, Ohio, Chris, the national championship, Earl Anthony going over the one million. Historical achievement for Earl Anthony. He's the winner. He's going to be in the 220s, even with a bad count. Look at that. He is over the million-dollar mark. 43 years old, his 38th victory, his fifth national championship. What a competitor. <laughs> and since that day, 10 years ago, six more have been added, including one last week, Brian Voss. And the next possibility would be this man. Less than 7,000 is needed by Amleto Monicelli. Here we go now with match two, Dave Ferraro going against Steve Cook. Steve won his last singles title in 1988 in Phoenix. 6'7", 275. Huge bow. Biggest man on the professional bowlers tour. We'll notice the left-handers, our tournament leader, Joe Salvemini, and Steve Cook playing a little bit farther towards the center of the lane. The right-handers had the edge and angle this week as they could play outside the lefties in. You see Cook's ball sliding by, leaving the three-pin. And the reason the lefties had to play farther inside, Chris, the oil was placed more on the right side of the lane this week. Mm -hmm. Steve Cook, all in black, from Roseville, California, Kingston, New York's Dave Ferraro. First shot of his second match, 255 in the first with eight strikes. And also a three pin, but let's add the 10. <laughs> the 310 baby split, as we call it. Pretty easy shot under normal circumstances. All it's Dave has to do is get the ball to the right of the three pin, let the ball deflect into the 10. A few anxious moments put that body English, but it's a mark. An interesting scenario for Dave Ferraro, as you see him having the ball deflect from the three into the 10. He bowled 255 the, the first game. He did not complete the game, as you see Steve Cook 
pushing, putting some tape in his ball. When I say that Ferraro didn't complete the game, he needed a good count on his fill ball or 11th frame. He left the 8-10 split and just pushed the button, and he would have had 256. That's an automatic fine for the PBA. He has a $100 fine, but he still wins the game. He's going on against Cook, who has starred with a spare. All right. And this time, Steve has left the 7 pin on the left lane. Actually, Steve's last title was a doubles victory with his brother-in-law, Mike Albee. Cook will be hard and straight at the tent at the seven pin. We've timed this before at 22 miles per hour. He cuts that hook down, and for people with trouble with the corner spares, a good lesson: throw it hard, cut the hook down. A couple of spares for Cook. Carefully looking over the pin set up here on the left lane. Well, you got a good eye, Chris Shankle. I stayed here late last night, and Cook had one complaint. He complained about the pin setup on the left-hand lane, asked our PBA officials to move the head pin slightly to the right. It's right on spot now. He has to be happy with it, but that's the pin he checked, the head pin. It was about a quarter inch off spot. A tentative Steve Cook, Chris, we don't see that very often. Usually he's out there attacking as he's left a very difficult spare, the 2-4-7-8. You've got to guard against the chop and still carry out the 8-pin. All he has to do is get the ball in here, let the ball drive out the 2, carry the 4, and always that tough back 8-pin. Steve's first title, 1979 at Alameda. We always did an enjoyable stop in that suburb of San Francisco, Alameda, California. Mm. Open frame, seven pin, left lane. Steve always plagued by spares. It's been the one shortcoming of his game as you see the sharp breaking hook take out the two, four, and eight, leaving the seven. He lost the tournament, the true value, by one pin a couple years ago by missing a spare in the tenth. Dave Ferraro jumping on it. You now following the Professional Bowlers Tour next on ABC's Wide World of Sports, heading to Oslo, Norway, where the 1988 Olympic gold medalist Gordieva and Grimkov take the ice against skating top pairs in the World Challenge of Champions, plus from Alaska, the dramatic finish of the Iditarod Trail Race, then heading south for live coverage of the Florida Derby. Wide World. <laughs> Our 30th anniversary year of music nostalgia. 30 years ago, Kenny Ball gave us Midnight in Moscow. Okay, that's next Saturday. We're in the greater metropolitan New York area, North Brunswick, New Jersey. In three weeks, we'll be back in the New York metropolitan area for Leisure's Long Island Open in Sayville. Look forward to that. Now, Steve Cook trailing by 36, open frame, fourth. Second game against Dave Ferraro. Still that single pin, six pin for Steve Cook. Steve's best year. He has won a total of 14 tournaments, was in 86. He won four championships, at that time earning $115,000. Now for that single pin, carefully setting himself to left to center. Southpaw ready. He gets it. Still trailing by 36 as we join Nelson. Shako in the semifinal match, Billy Young Jr. Billy, the lanes look in ideal shape. Uh, you get to choose who starts the semifinal match, whether you start or your opponent. Uh, have you made any decision? Uh, not yet. I'm going to wait till I throw a couple of practice shots on the pair. Uh, lanes are a little tighter than they have been all week, uh, but they're really playable today. 
All right, he's going to pick when he gets out there, Chris, and as he said, they're very playable and high scoring. Back to you. Steve switched balls in that last frame. Here he is, trying it again. Four pin. Steve Cook against Dave Ferrara. The winner of the match will go against Billy Young, semifinalist. And then our tournament leader from Oklahoma City, Joe Salvemini. Cook just completely struggling on the championship pair. The first appearance by a left-hander. Remember our tournament leader, Joe Salvemini, is a lefty. You'll see how he fares right now. Cook has to really get in gear to stay in this match. And carefully covers the pin. Now Dave Ferraro, who's 5'7", weighs 155 pounds. Coming up high. Well, he got away with a shot in the ninth frame of his match against George Branham III. He pulled the ball in the left-hand lane. It's set in the pocket, and I think he's kind of dependent on that shot a couple of times. Remember, he tripped the four-pin mm -hmm. the previous frame. Now he's high here in the fifth. Closes my imagination on the last shot prior to the spare. Was he moving more rapidly on the approach. It looked like he was racing to the line. I agree, Chris. Uh, one tendency you have when you want one is to let those feet go too fast. You get a little out of time. You pull the ball. That certainly wasn't tippy-toe, but that had beautiful tempo. Tempo. Well, he is a tempo player. He uses his legs a lot for leverage, as all these players do. They're mostly leg players, not too much arm players. Steve Cook has power anywhere he wants it. Right now, he has to put the ball in the pocket. I think he has to go with a little more speed and start attacking. Sixth frame and still struggling. Our left-hander from California. What's the style of Steve Cook? Now, he has an ideal swing for a big man. He's up top, but look at how, once again, his pivot step is right in line with his target. Now, watch the swing come down inside out. And he's playing the big, big hook ball, and when we have long oil, remember I said it's 45 feet down the lane, long oil does not favor the big hook ball player, hence Steve Cook in a little trouble. As we pointed out, Steve Cook has been a dominant player from 80 to 86. He says the lifestyle change altered that dominance, but he's back. Well, Bo, in uh, 1988, I opened up a business back in California and took a lot of time away from my practice, wasn't able to do what I used to do to come out here and compete. And about uh, two, three months ago, just before the winter tour, me and my wife and my partner back home looked at some tapes, saw some things that we needed to work on, and uh, I've been pre bowling pretty well so far this year, and hopefully it'll continue today. And he's still in that bowling ball supply business and will mesh the tour and his business together the rest of the season. and the fans cheer for Steve Cook. Continues to trail, but got them all with one shot. We'll be back with the finish of that match. Wide World follows us. We're at Caroler Lanes in North Brunswick, New Jersey. Dave Ferrar leading by 36. Strike up. Leads by 46. Going against Steve Cook. Dave Ferrar of Kingston, New York, won the first match 255 to George Brenham the third's 248. Ferraro with an ideal style for the championship here. He doesn't hook the ball too much. He's what we call a down-the-line player, as is will be his opponent if he wins this match, Billy Young. But Ferraro keeps his hand behind the ball with a good loft over the top. Ferraro, groovy today. 56 pin lead at this point of the match. Well, it's absolutely must strike time for Steve Cook. The best he can bowl is 222. Ferraro right now going at a 220 plus pace. So Cook has to strike. And again, it's a seven pin. 
Let's look at why the big power bowler and the, the man who throws the big ball in this this group is Steve Cook, why he struggles. He's starting the ball here. Now remember the oil is all the way down the lane to here. So what happens is ball kind of hangs and doesn't finish. If the oil was a little shorter, the edge might go his way, not this week. Okay. Among the great fans anywhere in the world are those from the metropolitan New York area. We know we lived here and did so many events. And what a cross-section bow we have here in Carter Lanes today. We have five junior pro-am winners, some of the high school bowlers, as the New Jersey State High School Championship was played earlier to our right as part of this 82-lane house. A lot of action. Right now for Steve Cook, he's going to be watching it for the next 45 minutes. It's the best he can do is 202. He's in trouble. Another 10 pin. Now the best he can do is 191. And Chris, you're talking about the New Yorkers showing up for mm -hmm. this. In the Pro-Am alone, we had Athelia Gibson, the Wimbledon champion, Harry Carson, linebacker, Giants, uh -huh. Phil Belpiano will play for the Raiders, Sean Lundetta, the punter for the Giants, Phil Muchnick from the New York Post, who's on hand today, was down here. Dave Jennings, Tom Gatewood, the great from the Giants, was also all in the Pro-Am on Monday. And fortunately, Steve Cook now has covered that 10 pin. Yeah, Bo, that's uh, quite a list. And it goes on and on, Chris. That is just a few, as you see Dave Ferraro up with a chance to bowl at 268. Mm. His opponent will be Billy Young and then Joe Salvemini for the Johnny Petraglia Open Championship. That's the format coming up. This, more match, games. Is, this mm -hmm. match is over, Chris, and, mm -hmm. and we talked during the break between the first and second matches what we thought would happen. I said Ferraro would have had a chance to to break the four game record of 10.50 if he keeps going. That record of 10.50 held by my colleague Nelson Burton who did not bowl this week. Took a week off. Dale Ballard, our statistician, finished 24th. You know, this week Bo's tip where he asked Robert Lawrence to offer some advice on how to get out of a slump. Watch and listen Bo's tip of the week. On last week's bowling tip, we talked about practicing. And keeping the tip in that same vein, we have with us touring professional Robert Lawrence. Now, Robert, you got in a little bit of a slump last year. What was your problem? Of a ball speed. I had to create more ball speed to get the ball down the lane a little better. I see here in the replay here, you had a real low position, a short backswing, and obviously the ball broke way too much on the lane. Now, Robert, with that kind of problem, you can't score very well. So what did you really do to change your game and get out of this slump? Well, I had to raise my ball swing up a little bit. And by doing that, I raised the ball from waist high, as you can see on the left there, to about chest high, as the picture on the right. What that created was a higher push away, which created a higher backswing. It got the ball about five or six feet further down the lane with the ball speed. All right, Robert, how long or how many practice sessions did you really work on it to develop your speed? It took me about three or four weeks to get comfortable with it. All right, take a tip from Robert Lawrence to develop more ball speed, hold it higher in the push away, get a longer swing, and get that practice in. Now for our tournament summary after two games here in the $150,000 Johnny Petraglia Open. Dave Ferraro winning the first game against George Branham the third, 255 to 248 with eight strikes. Dave came back against Steve Cook in the second game, nine strikes. Total score of 267 to 180. Now he goes against another right-hander named Billy Young. It should be a great match. Here's John Petraglia and his wife, Pat, and Johnny, too. What a wonderful young man he is. And the tournament is named for him, Bo, and Lee Livingston, the managing director here. He and his staff have done such a wonderful job at promoting this the last two years. There's Lee. Terrific job. You're right, Chris, and his wife right next to him. And once again, a great outstanding crowd. And little Johnny Jr. once made a bowling tip of the week a few few months ago and, for us. And there's Phil Mushnick and his wife, Debbie. Phil, the distinguished TV columnist for the New York Post and bowled in the Pro-Am, is a great pal of Johnny Petraglia. Plays a lot of uh, golf and bowling with him. 
Okay, Bo, what about this group of people? Usual size of the field, Chris, 160 game average. Look at the top 24, the highest of the season, 222. Benoit was in the top five last year here. Parker Bone made a charge, a local. Phil Ringener, Bobby Fleetwood, 11th. Wilson, a new rookie on the tour. Watch him, Jeff Hickenbotham, first finals. Mike Shady, Scheip, tied for 13, 14th place. Deadeye, 16th. Couch on his quest to be the Rookie of the Year. Purvis Granger says hi to a friend of his, Buffy. Scott Deaver's breaking out of his slump. Scott Myers, McCune, fireball down there, 21st place. Andy Nyer, a good guy. Laster, first top 24. And holding up the trophy, our gutter ball expert, Del Ballard Jr. Okay. All right. Marcy, that cheer is for Del Ballard, who is our scorekeeper, and they recognize that great hero. March 21st, Cleveland Open, Parma Heights. That's next week. We'll be on live at 3 Eastern. We hope you'll be back joining us. And then um, in two weeks, we'll go a little bit west. The Bud Light PBA National Championship in Toledo, Ohio. Great then event. On, then it's on to say, Bill Chris. Now the semifinal match. The one guy I think can stop the runaway train of Dave Ferraro is Billy Young. Remember his strategy? He said he didn't know whether he won the start or finish. He is making Dave Ferraro start the match. That means that the first one finished will be Billy Young. He may have made Dave Ferraro angry. <laughs> I'll say the one fellow that can really, really, I'll say it again, can really get it going out here is Billy Young. These lanes are made for him, but once again, he's been sitting on the sideline for 45 minutes, and he is a bit nervous. Let's see what happens. Leaving a three-pin on the right lane. Billy Young with an ideal four-step delivery. He has a little stutter step in the middle of his step. Now he slides and now he waits for his ball. Now look at the position he has right here. Arm in perfect position. He's going to pivot onto this right pivot step. Drive through with a low knee bend. That time he didn't quite get the ball speed he needed to make the ball set up in the pocket. An easy spare, the three pin. Billy, who won his first title in Windsor, Ontario, Canada in 1985. He has won two. His second title was the Tums Classic. Windsor Larks, uh, Connecticut, as the top seed. Billy Young, and a great outside player. And watch how he sets up. Many people have trouble with this line. He'll be out here. He'll slide in this zone. And watch where that ball goes, just outside the first arrow, hanging along the edge. But he is an expert. The 34-year-old will be faced by the six-pen on the left lane on his right sleeve, left side of your screen. Billy Young is wearing a strikeout drugs patch. There it is. BBA very much behind striking out of all drugs, illegal drugs. A one-pin lead by Ferraro, who is up. Can increase it to 11. Strike in the second. And give him a double. He now has 19 strikes after two games and two frames into his third match. And he's got them all going. He's got the light hit going, and he's got the trip four going. When he can carry that from that outside line, Katie bar the door. And right now, the only thing that can help Billy Young is if something unlucky happens to Ferraro because Ferraro has got it all going. And everything is coming up. Strikes. You see the line. Now watch how Ferraro comes through the ball, the good loft over the foul line, and arm directly towards the target. The six, pop, six pin pops out mm. the 10. He's perfect through three. Billy Young has to get it going right now. And now a four pin. 
Billy looking down at the lane. What should I do? What should I do? It's easy to see from the announce booth. The extreme pressure he's under with a, against an opponent who is red hot like Ferraro is very simple. He needs a little more ball speed. That ball will just set right there in the, in the pocket or a little bit more loft over the foul line as Ferraro is using. A spare Billy Young. Recognized as one of the purest outside line shooters, describes why the outside works so well. Well, I think there are two important things to think about whenever you're playing the gutter. Uh, first is overcoming the fear of playing near the channel, and the second is moving your eyes up and down the lane, controlling your break point, spotting closer to the foul line when the lanes are tied and further down the lane when the lanes are hooking. The left lane hooking a little more in the right, he'll spot a little farther down, and hopefully he can get it going right here in the fourth. Started out bowling at eight, grew up idolizing Tita Semez, a New Jersey bowler from River's Edge. We'll be back with more of the third game. All right, we're back again. Semi-final game. Dave Ferraro has won the first two, averaging over 260. Three in a row now. Fourth frame. Okay. Dave Ferraro, six titles. As we now go down to Bo Burton with 17 titles. Thank you, Chris Schenkel. Our tournament leader, Joe Salvemini. Joe, who would you rather bowl, the red-hot Ferraro or your good friend from your own hometown, Oklahoma City, Billy Young? Well, really, there's no preference. Uh, let's just get it on. I'm ready to bowl. But uh, it would be fun to bowl, Billy. Uh, you know, we've been friends from way back, and it would be kind of interesting to see it happen. So, Billy Young. All right, he wants Billy Young, but he's got his hands full, Chris. Well, we were sort of hoping that Dave Ferraro could string a few more. In fact, a lot more. But he left a 10 pin on the left lane. We're dying to give away that 100,000 true value hardware for a perfect game. And it's Ferraro who leads by 31 as Billy Young, his opponent, is up and can cut it to 21 with a strike in the fifth frame. Billy Young, a little more loft over the foul line, a little more speed. He can get right back in this match because he can murder these pairs when he gets zeroed in. Confidence builder with that double. Next, wide world of sports. Uh, from Oslo, Norway, Olympic gold medalist Gordievan Grinkoff. They skate so beautifully. They'll go against other top pairs. And from Alaska, dramatic finish of the Adidarod. Then head south for a little warmer climate and the thoroughbreds. Live coverage of the Florida Derby. All next, wide world. Key shot for Billy Young. Nobody has pushed Dave Ferraro other than Branham in the early going. Let's see if Young can get back in the match right here. Crowd really getting into it now. 11 pins separating Ferraro, at whom we're looking, and Billy Young. Ferraro with a spare up shooting in the sixth frame. Now with 22 strikes today, has an 11 pin lead, can up it to 21. his wife Gloria, parents of John David and Gabrielle. Check the pin action of the four pin in the left hand part. Here it gets hit by the two pin. It slides over and takes out the six. Fantastic. All right. We're in North Brunswick, New Jersey. Carolyn Lane's Johnny Petragli Open. We'll be back. We're looking at 34-year-old Billy Young, pulling out of Edmond, Oklahoma. Going against Dave Ferraro in our third game of the afternoon. Ferraro winning the first two big. 
Young trailing here by 21 can cut it to 11 with a strike. Four. Once again, speed is the difference. Bill Young, when he gets that ball well out over the foul line and keeps the speed up, has the ball set up right in the pocket. And right now, the way Ferraro is bowling, even when you get a four pin or any, any time you come off a string, it's like an open frame, the way Ferraro is bowling. Right now, Billy Young would trail by 22 with a conversion here in the seventh. Mm -hmm. All right. Billy Young. Winner will meet Joe Salvemini, at whom we're looking. 36-year-old from Oklahoma City, lefty. Salvemini, very confident over there, Chris. He, he felt like this is his week from the from the get-go Thursday night in the qualifying rounds. And right now, he's watching to see which man will face him for the championship. Eighth frame for both players. First really errant shot that we've seen either one of the right-handers uncork today. Billy traveling over to the left side of the head pin. Has a pretty simple spare of the nine pin, but he needed to keep the strikes going. He's not out of it. He's going at a 216 pace. So far, Ferraro at a 239 pace through just seven frames. looks a little bit down, not uh, pleased that much with his performance and things that have happened to him today. But Ferraro, double working, leading by 23, can up it. Now he leads by 33. Tomorrow here on ABC, there's no speed limit for race fans. That is, the men that drive the cars of NASCAR, kicking off their season high gear Defending Winston Cup champ Dale Earnhardt looks to lead the pack in the Motorcraft 500. Then, in identical cars, the world's best drivers go full throttle in round one of the International Race of Champions. That's tomorrow, ABC. Crossover toward Kingston, New York. It's all Ferraro's way today. Right now, he's put Billy Young just about out of commission. Billy can still finish with 236. Ferraro, a possible 279. Ferraro has got to start thinking record, Chris. He's averaging 261 through the first two games. If he goes out for 279, he'll have 800 for three games. Billy's most powerful strike of the match. Sort of a wry smile of, where were you earlier? Well, that's uh, a matter of a little pressure. He's bowled very well, but everything's gone Ferraro's way. Not taking anything away from Ferraro, possible 279, but he's, he's tripped out the six, he's crossed over, he's carried the wall, he's slapped the 10, but it's his day. Remember, this man has gone through a lot of championship round mm -hmm. woes in the last couple years, and he is a champion, no doubt. We talked record, 1050, 1984 on a long oil pattern. I was the lucky one to set that record. I hate to get on eye syndrome, but let's see what uh, Ferraro would actually need. If he takes this game out for 279, that'd give him 801 for the first three. He would need 249 to tie in the championship game and 250 for a new record. All right. Delightful guy, Billy Young. How's his concentration? He didn't even know it was the 10th frame. <laughs> Here's the conversion, the 3 9 10. Perfect. He'll finish with a 2 16 with a strike. Mm -hmm. Fans appreciate Billy's efforts getting to the number two spot out of a huge field and tough competition. But today his game was off and he was going against Dave Ferraro, who has four in a row here at the end. Wow. 
So Dave has won three. Brian Voss last week won four matches for his championship. So can Dave do it? Missed that shot, Bo. Dave, you, Dave, you got to have a, a big game now to break the record, bud. He wins this game easily with 246. He is now 10778 for his first three matches in the championship match, Chris. He'll need a 270-something to break the record. Breathe easily, my friend, Bo. <laughs> ABC Sports presentation of the Professional Bowlers Show will return after this message and a word from our ABC station. Thank you very much, Frank Gifford. And here in New Jersey, not too far from where Frank is, Dave Ferraro started things off with a 255-248 win over George Branham III. Dave came right back. He had nine strikes in that one. He had eight strikes in his victory, 267 to 180 over Steve Cook. Eight more strikes in his victory over Billy Young, 246 to 215. So now it's going to be a right-hander, Dave Ferraro against left-handed Joe Salvemini. Next week, Cleveland, two weeks from today, March 28th, the $300,000 Bud Light PBA National Championship in Toledo. A man here has won the national championship to go along with the U.S. Open and the Firestone. That's why he is one of three Triple Crown champions. Our host here, Johnny Petraglia. What a telecast we're having on scoring, John. Oh, this is great so far, Chris. Uh, mm -hmm. Ferraro putting on a tremendous performance today. I'll ask John this. John, uh, basically, you know these pair of, this pair of lanes, 35 and 36. When the righties are going that good and the left-handers have to play inside, does Salvemini have any chance against Ferraro? Well, I think Salvemini has a chance, Bo, as long as he can get by lane 36. 36 tends to overhook a little bit more than 35. I think Joe will do fine on lane 35. It's a question of whether he can hit 36 or not. John, you're going to stay here with us and make some comments when you wish to. Um, we're proud of you. You've had a wonderful career. You have a lot of friends. Well, thank you, Chris. And uh, let's hope uh, we make some more friends this last game. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Here we go. Crowd. Capacity crowd. One of the largest we've seen in 30 years. Jared Carroller Lanes. Dave Ferraro. Three victories going now against the tournament leader. 28,000 to the victor. 14,5 to the runner-up. Shot number one. Hit. Well, the first time that Ferraro has failed to really threaten the pocket in the early frames, he came out and was light in the very first shot of the telecast, but ever since then he's been zeroed. A couple of things could be happening. After over an hour of bowling, big crowd, a lot of heat, the lanes could be changing slightly. Let's see how he adjusts. All right, he continues to mark. 25 strikes, three victories. Now, here he is. 5'10", 170 pounds, 36-year-old Joe Salvemini, born in San Francisco, three titles. <laughs> Last win was in Austin, Texas in 1989. Johnny Petraglia, let's set it up for Salvemini as we see his style. He's very smooth. He has a good inside swing. Look at his pivot step right there. Once again, the key, the pivot step is in the exact direction as the arm swing, and he goes right to target. And Johnny, the key, obviously he hit the right-hand lane, which you thought we have trouble with. How about the left-hand lane? Does it play about the same? Well, he could be just fine, Bo, because if he's going to hit 36, uh, I'm, I'm going to go out on a limb and say he's going to hit 35. <laughs> Winning all that time and doubling in his first game of the afternoon for Ferraro, his fourth. Some quick stats. The tournament leader, who is Salvemini, so far this year, the tournament leader has only won three times and nine chances, so this favors Ferraro. There he is with his patented pocket hit that you've seen 26 times today. For the record, we spoke about so far, Dave Ferraro has a score of 778 for three games. That relates to 259 plus average. He needs a 273, which makes him strike the next eight balls to break the record. There's one, Bo. We love Nelson Burton because that 1050 record is his. But Bo's like all the great athletes. They don't mind their records being broken as long as it's done by somebody with a lot of talent. 
no doubt about that with Dave Ferraro, but he still has to worry about winning the tournament. Sal Vamini's tough. Mm -hmm. Here he is, double up. Seven pin. John, just as you thought, the seven pin, but you thought he would be a little higher in life, but that was solid in the pocket. Well, Bo, I think what happened there is that he got so much hook, it actually rolled out the last five feet, and that's what caused the seven. And uh, that's what makes that lane so tough, because it hooks back so much and then tends to roll out. Good point. Joe Salvemini has suffered through some physical problems. However, of late, he's made a comeback. Well, I've had a little bit of a back problem the last two years. It seems to come and go. Uh, a little bit on the lower back causes me a pretty extreme pain when I try to throw the ball, take a couple months off, a lot of chiropractic, physical therapy, stretching. And it seemed to come around. And hopefully I've got it licked. And uh, my game right now is as strong as it's ever been. And as long as I can stay healthy, I think I'm in. And now a 10 pin. John, bad break? That was really a bad break, Blow. He shredded the rack, and had been just one around the 10. The ball out on about the first board, and watch the ball's action as it goes through the 1-2, and then the action of the 5-pin. As John said, he just slices that 5-5 five, five right in front of the 10. Easy spare, but he will trail by two pins after four frames with this conversion. Okay, we're in our championship match of the Johnny Petraglia Open at Carolur Lanes in North Brunswick. We'll return. The future. Our junior bowlers, five Pro-Am winners. Johnny? Oh, they were just terrific, Chris. One of them shot uh, a seven and change as scratch. It's a good thing we're going to be retired by the time he's old enough to bowl on tour. <laughs> seven and change, Johnny, meaning a 700 series. And, John, how many uh, Pro-Am entries did you have here? I know it was a bunch. Well, we had about 500 juniors and 2,400 Pro-Am entries altogether, with, including juniors and adults. Wow. Big. All right, here's Ferraro now. Marked with a spare, then a double, now shooting in the fourth. <laughs> Well, Ferraro a little bit confused. Right now he has the 3-9 double wood spare, his toughest spare of the day by far, as he sees his ball drift high. And I say confused, he was so zeroed in to have a ball go high has to confuse him. It's fun here to watch one of the pillars of bowling, not only New Jersey, but everywhere, Hall of Famer Chuck Pisano, a great journalist in bowling watching every shot and doing some body English for both. I agree. Ferraro, the record score, went by the wayside with that frame, with the miss. Now all he has to think about is title as the match is even through four. He'll take it. Dave Ferraro, if you just join us, he's won three matches, 255 to 248. Then uh, 267 to 180, and another 246 to 216. And the tournament leader, you're looking at him, Joe Salvemini from Oklahoma City. Or even. There it is, an even fair. <laughs> I was afraid that might happen on that lane one time, and he got a little soft and sucked out the middle. All right, John, he's got a tough shot here, and he really has to take a little guesswork at what he wants to do. He can either go for the three on the left or try to hook off the 6-10 into the 4-7-8 area. Let's see what he tries. What a great effort. <laughs> All out. These professionals really do it. We're so proud of them. They let it hang out. John, most people think that shooting the big five, the easiest way to make it is shoot for the three pins. But when we recorded those in Piscataway, New Jersey, not a few years back, we found out that shooting for the two and sliding the one pin over into the three is the easiest way. Obviously, you lose count. So right now, Salvemini made a calculated guess. He trails by 16. Bouncing back. The leaders by round, Branham, who was in that first match losing, and Kent Wagner. 
Ken Wagner, uh, NASCAR fan, and he's looking forward to that IROC race of champions on ABC tomorrow. And then Parker Bone was up there, and obviously Sal Bemini took over in the last 16 games on Friday. Right now, here's the tournament leader with just five frames to go, Ferraro. <laughs> Leaving a two pin and gesturing like I'm confused or what happened. I agree, Chris. Johnny Petragli, what's happening out there right now in the championship pair? Well, Bo looks like the oil is carrying down a little bit. When he gets direct, it, it'll hook high, but he has to get more direct uh, because the oil is in the back end of the line. We want to congratulate uh, Dick Evans. Gary Dickinson and Bud Horn being inducted into the American Bowling Cong Congress Hall of Fame on Thursday night in Corpus Christi. And Hall of Famer, 83-year-old Joe Norris, getting his needed 41 pins to set an ABC record of over 111,000 pins, Bo. Lifetime pinfall record. Johnny Petragli, you said the oil has carried down a little bit. It's been about over two hours since they started practicing on the championship pair right now for the title with four frames left it's anybody's match well, Paul, i think it's going to come down to what kind of a shot salvemini makes on lane 36 right now if he misses this lane i think ferraro thinks he can stay clean but if salvemini strikes ferraro is going to have to attack all right let's watch it key shot for salvemini Seventh frame on the difficult right-hand lane. He's wearing a wireless mic. I didn't even move. He's confused, John. All right, Joe made the move. He, I think what happened, Bo, you've mentioned this a lot of times, where he moved off the bad shot. He was soft last frame. It, it wasn't because the lane was hooking more, and he had moved off the bad shot and then went back to normal speed. Good observation. Still a tough spare, the 3-5. Yeah, look out. There is Kim. Joe Salvemini, so confident all week long, Chris. I was watching him Thursday night, just chewing some gum, marching along like this was just a little practice session. And for the first time all week long, I don't see him chomping on that gum. The confidence has faded a little bit, but there's three frames left. He trails by 14. Oh, my. Oh, my. That's right. This is, uh, you really got to pull yourself together now. He's, he's still only down 24. You're right, John, as he sends it wide on the left-hand lane in the channel. And right now trailing by 24, but he can still make the spare and stay in the match. Big shot. Yeah, absolutely. He's really got to concentrate here. 20 pins with three frames to go isn't a lot. Still too much on the line to sort of, uh, lose your concentration now. No professional. Gutsy shot there. Ooh. You, it's awfully difficult to send it wide again after you send one in the channel, but let's see what kind of hypodermic has been shot into Dave Ferraro as he comes up in the eighth with a 24-pin lead. The man that once wanted to be a harness horse race driver shows that he has tremendous skill at this sport. Well, he can just about lock it up with a strike here. He, he amped that one up, Bo. He really threw that one hard and kept it online. He's, he's thinking staying clean, but I know he would love to strike and just about locked it up. But Joe's got to strike out now. It's going to be tough. You're right, partner. Salvemini looking at the scoreboard off to the right has a potential 2-0-2. Ferraro going at a 206 pace. <laughs> Mandatory that Salvemini strike on the next three balls.
Johnny Petragli, you've won them all, but you come to the 10th frame and you're a great clutch player, as Sal Bemini is. He threw three strikes to beat you for his first title. What goes through your mind at this point when you must strike? Well, especially in Joe's mind, he's such a confidence player, uh, a confident player. You say, uh, hey, I led this tournament. There's a lot of pressure on me, but I'm good enough to handle it. And Joe's going to do it. He's going to strike out. All right. Must strike. Joe's attitude. It's uh, it's like if it isn't fun, what is it? He enjoys bowling, he enjoys life, and he's tough. Reed, he's still in the tournament. Hey, this is what it's all about, Chris. Your chest mm -hmm. is pounding, your palms are sweaty. Right. That's where it's fun. And it's tournament all named for you, JP. Sal Bemini can close within four pins with an additional strike here in the tenth. I'm sure, Johnny Petragli, that's the best break he's gotten in an opportune time in a long, long tournament. Well, that's correct, Bo. I felt like he was going to strike out, but I didn't think he'd get one like that. <laughs> okay, full count's very important here because even with a mark, Ferraro would have to make good counts to win. for Joe Salvemini, the tournament leader, shooting a 200. All right, for Dave Ferraro, he needs to fill 15 pins in the 10th frame. He has to mark. The strike is Lock City. If he doesn't, he must spare. He's so good. A 32-year-old on the verge of getting win number seven. Johnny Petraglia, you can send your son in there. Little Johnny Jr. get these five pins. <laughs> nice ball. <laughs> Last year, eight telecasts. He won the Bud Light Tournament Players Championship. Fourth appearance this year. Three times fifth. And now a better day. Or Dave Ferraro of Kingston, New York. There's your winner. The Johnny Petraglia Open champion is Dave Ferraro.